finally, the day is upon us where we have the full review of the Cycleboard Rover. The Cycleboard Rover is my absolute uh, favorite line of cycle boards that's out there. They have a bunch of different uh, uh, vehicles to choose from, so make sure to follow the link down in the YouTube description. That'll carry you over to Cycleboard, and you can look at all the specs and the things that I don't necessarily touch on on this one, plus all the models that I might not speak about. But we will uh, dabble into the golf model a little bit because this one's kind of, they're related uh, closely. And we'll get into how that is later. But now let's just go over some specs of the Cycle Board Rover. This review will not cover the range or uh, the battery range and uh, really speeds and, and uh, grades too much. I want to try to do that on another review. And uh, also some other things I want to do with this with some adapters later this spring into the summer. But you do get up to 40 miles with extended battery and that's in here. I have the extended battery so that range review should come uh, later on this year. Uh, you get a 30 degree incline which we'll talk about if that was able to pull that off because I did kind of check that one out but not a full go but uh, uh, enough to prove something. Uh, it has an 1800 watt motor which that's a huge thing on this guy and it's a beast. Uh, you can really feel that kick in when you're going that 27 miles per hour, 26 miles per hour, some, something like that. The wind hits you just right in the back, you'll hit 27. That's what I run into, but uh, still completely joy, a joy to uh, ride that fast on this thing. You get rear suspension and independent front suspension. That is uh, really special and different than any of the competition because uh, this just adds to comfort and, and that long haul comfort, especially with that extended battery. When you're going that 40 miles, you really want to be as comfortable as humanly possible. I've had plenty of electric ride-ons that do not offer suspension or nowhere near as good as suspension as this. And it gets rough after a while. The LCD screen is bright. You can see this in all conditions, which is fantastic. And uh, it covers your speed, your battery life on the vehicle, and all the speed modes. There's five speed modes. And it's got an odometer and trips that you can set on here, which you can set to where you can help monitor your distance and your range. So I would go uh, buy that trip for sure. That way, if you know you've gone one direction every how many miles, you know, it's going to take that to get back. Right below the screen is the thumb throttle. Um, it works great. There's no play, there's no jiggle, wiggle, no looseness to it. It's nice and tight. It's got a solid spring in it. It feels like it'll last just as long as the vehicle itself. So that is a plus. And right next to the thumb throttle are the grips. The grips are super nice. They, uh, just mold right to your hand and it just adds to the luxury of the whole vehicle itself um, and it complements everything. Everything complements the other and it just comes out to be a really solid uh, vehicle when you really look at each individual attention to detail and all the little specs and everything. They've really done a good job with it but the grips are fantastic. Cycleboard's website has some accessories and they kind of list those out by the, the vehicle. But uh, some things will work on this uh, regardless of model. They're kind of universal attachments. They've got a blinker that will screw into the side of the grips. I have it on the Generation 1. They work pretty good. I'll leave a link to the accessories. Um, but uh, anything that kind of will fit on a bike can kind of fit on this too. So your lights. I'll leave a link to an actual headlamp light that I recommend on this. It's super nice, rechargeable. It's super bright and really does a good job. And uh, then on the Generation 2s, they now have a rear a light, a tail light for your brakes. When you push the brake, it'll flash and you get the uh, uh, fender on the back as well, but not on the front uh, standard. So that's fantastic now that they offer that. Weight of the Rover's pretty heavy. It's pushing close to 90 pounds after you some, add some accessories and whatnot to it about uh, 85, 83 pounds, somewhere in there. So it can be heavy, so just make sure you can lift, we'll say 90 pounds, and you should be good with this thing. And it'll fit in the back of a Honda Accord, because I actually carried that to some places and drove this thing in the back of one, so I know it fits perfectly back there. The quick fold handle's pretty nice. You just push in this and lower it down. Clicks into place, so it's not gonna go anywhere for transport. Push it, bring it back up again, does the job. You kind of can use this to help steer this because you'll just shift your weight from one side or the other. The handle really doesn't turn or do anything. 
your shifting on this board and tilting will cause the wheels to turn left or right. It's completely natural feeling. It's not odd or weird or anything whatsoever. Welds on it are fantastic too, should I mention. Um, uh, super nice welding and I do I do know a thing or two about welds or knowing if they're good I don't really know how to weld that good but um, I know a good weld when I see one now the suspension is rear suspension and uh, independent suspension in the front now that's accomplished by some springs underneath the deck and on the sides the, the springs underneath the deck really help this thing to spring back to center uh, the springs on the outer edge really help to absorb a lot of the impact from debris and things that you run over on the road. And the rear flexes right behind the board itself. And it's really a cushiony, well-balanced ride. There is an IP65 rating under here, under this hatch here. It comes shipped with four lock nuts holding this down. They're small, so you need to ratchet those things off and put the included uh, little wing nut things on there with handles so that you can actually turn them and get them off without the lock nuts because those can be a, a pain to deal with so i would suggest swapping them out these have never come loose and on my generation one i've never had them really come loose so i wouldn't worry about that there's a permanent kind of gasket on the inside it's not like a free floating rubber gasket so the gasket runs along the frame and, and not all against the board uh, i've never had any water get in uh, through that that I could tell I ran through some puddles while I've had this just to see if it would really get in there and I didn't have any water in the battery compartment not to say if you're riding this in a downpour which I wouldn't do um, anyway but I didn't get it running over some puddles one thing to note too the charging port make sure to slide that charging port to the side it's got arrows on it and you slide it down and out of the way and behind that it's kind of like a rubber cover to help keep water out of the port and it does a great job of doing that it stops debris from getting in there I had some debris on that rubber cover um, from riding the other day and I just swept it right off but what I'm trying to say is on the battery itself is where the plug will the pin plugs will pull it plug in and sometimes that can be shifted out of its hole a little bit when you're riding it it'll vibrate the battery itself is meant to be a quick release battery because there's two lock nuts that holds the battery down and so you may need to tighten those when you get them or it may vibrate and move the battery over a little bit so it doesn't line up when you're trying to charge it. The thing that you can do is take a wrench or whatever, open the top and just move it, that battery over, slide it over. Maybe tighten those nuts back down again. Hydraulic rear disc brakes. And these disc brakes work great. I was going full speed, screech to a stop, locked up good. Uh, I stayed center, I didn't spin out one way or the other and it took about two feet to stop at full speed so that's about 26 miles per hour is what I was going at that moment uh, so it did a fantastic job of stop stopping and you can engage the it has electronic braking um, so you can kind of engage that right when you, you let off the throttle and barely start to squeeze the brake uh, the electronic braking will kick in now it has a frame lock hole in the front up here on the left side yeah left side uh, you can just run it's just a hole there to run a lock a cable lock through this can support 275 pounds about 210 pounds myself and I've had absolutely no issues uh, it gets up to speed it feels very athletic uh, there's an, absolutely no issues with my weight now you got the 10 inch wide deck uh, you got a 10 inch diameter four inch wide rear tire and you got a 10 inch diameter three inch wide front tire this is a fantastic combination that's really able to 1800 watt powered motor here really drives that 10 by four inch tire uh, through everything just about it except for super loose sand and i'm sure it would go the same for like mud and dirt i probably wouldn't want to carry it through anything that was super soft that you would mar up in too much even though it has great ground clearance which surprised me through some situations we'll get, get to later but um yeah it's a great combination it's well thought out uh well engineered so kudos to the engineers uh for this thing uh really is nice you get this aluminum chassis steel combination in here uh, which makes everything feel industrial and commercial grade um, as if you're a fleet owner already of some tourist things that are competitors of this I really think this is a better option to go so if you're trying to rebuild your fleet for tourism 
for rentals or whatever you got going on I really do feel like the Rover is the best way to go for fleets you can quick change out that battery put in some new a new battery in the confidence level on this thing is pretty quick there's not really that much of a learning curve a couple minutes it's a, a lot safer than just about anything anything two wheel uh, this three wheel ride right here is completely stable there's a lot of confidence that comes along with it this linkage system down here that helps to steer these wheels is patented so you're not going to find that anywhere else and this steers so smooth it's insane the turn radius is really tight for as big as what this thing is motor in the back is super silent uh, you just really hear your normal road noise between a tire and the road and you don't really hear the motor whining and grinding back there in the back like some of the others but super quiet ride okay so now that all the specs and details are over with let's talk about my opinion starting from the top to the bottom the grips that we talked about earlier fantastic the braking right here stops on a dime this steel bar that goes up and down that connects this t-handle sturdy 400 pounds right the latch down here pops into place flips up and down works flawlessly you can even pick it up by this probably and i don't think the bottom would swing out from under you uh, the front suspension is fantastic the wheel diameter is perfect for this they've really thought this through the spacing and the wheel diameters are perfect it just adds to a comfort a super comfy ride and a very smooth steering the wheels will not touch uh, the board itself when you turn it as far I mean you got like this much space never ever had it grind no matter how rough I've been on this thing the deck this proprietary material here on the top washes off easy very grippy but it's not sandpaper so kudos because i don't really like the grip of sandpaper too grippy and just makes my teeth grind the fender's fantastic the rear brake light awesome very awesome you will have to supply your own headlamp but overall build quality is a 10 out of 10. this is a beast it's the greatest electric vehicle that i've ever uh, had the pleasure of operating and riding around with a 40 mile extended battery in here it's great testing oh boy did we do some testing we did some really i did the miles per hour test i got it i was able to get it to 26 miles per hour if i would have had some wind in my back 27 sure it was one degree off it could have been 26 and a half for all i know but it registered 26 which is fast and the stability on this thing is amazing whenever you're going that fast there is no fear that something's going to happen. Hitting potholes, hitting um, anything, gravel, loose gravel. You can turn. I wouldn't recommend turning that fast. Slow down a little bit, 15 miles an hour, 10, whatever. Make your turn onto another street. There's loose gravel there. I've never had this thing slide out. I tried to hit loose gravel. Uh, your steering handle may do like this when you hit a pothole, but you completely get used to the fact that that's going to happen. So give yourself a few weeks, a month, of really putting this thing through the paces. Get your confidence level up with it. Anticipate everything that's going to happen because you know what's going to happen from the experience of riding it. And be super duper safe because if you fell off of this thing, it could coast and I'm sure you would be responsible for whatever happens. I've rode a lot of two-wheel electric vehicles and there is zero confidence in that in a turn. You hit some gravel. I fell before it happens this I've never fortunately knock on wood had an accident but uh, the confidence is there we did speed we did debris we did gravel I went down uh, I'm luckily living in an area where there's a ton of construction going on I tried to hit as much transition from gravel to dirt to turning from gravel to dirt from turning from uh, asphalt to gravel uh, big chunks of gravel I drove through um, at a mode a speed mode 3 was as fast as I could go in big super chunks but I'm surprised it made it over that really and I'm surprised I didn't I thought I was gonna punch her a tire for sure because a lot of those huge boulders look like knives and would uh, cut the tires but they held up great um, transition like I said from gravel 
to asphalt, I mean, you name it, I've tried to do it in this. The day that I filmed a lot of the gravel stuff, it just has rained. I live in Alabama, North Alabama, and it has rained like more this year so far than ever. And it's just super muddy, and I really didn't want to take it in that loose construction dirt, but I did take it through some dirt, uh, sand, uh, gravel mix. And like I said earlier, the loose sand and super loose stuff, it would mar up into and not go through. But what would? I don't think anything would. A bike, a bicycle sure would not do that. Uh, it would mar up and you could, you'd have to get off and walk through it. And the same thing goes for this. I thought that bringing it back after going over these chunks of gravel, I could just hear it. And I was like, oh, I hope I'm not tearing up the brakes and the back. But I was like, whatever, let's just go through the worst case scenario stuff. Got it back home, flipped it over, looked at it. And there was no gouges, no scratches underneath, and that really surprised me. I thought there was gonna be something going on, but I just really didn't realize the clearance on this thing, and I was able to get over all that stuff. So I think if you're uh, traveling from subdivision to subdivision and using those and the trails that connect subdivisions sometimes, and some of this debris and things you might have to go through to get to another section that's good, uh, you can be able to do it with this tall grass, was able to do tall grass. Um, everything that I th might have had a doubt about, it was able to accomplish. And the soft stuff is the only thing that it wasn't really able to do. Super fantastic turn radius. The hill climb ability is fantastic. We found a, a spot that had a higher th than 30 degree incline and I was able to get up. It was a short distance. I really haven't found a solid 30 degree slope that uh, I would want to go up yet. That might come later along with the range test. I'll throw that in together, loop some things together for another testing, but it tackled that. So with it doing that, I'm pretty confident it could do a 30 degree slope, no problem, and drive right up it. So if you've got some hills, don't worry about it. This, was, this will get you where you need to go. If you're gonna jump a curb, it will do it, and the back end's not heavy front end's not heavy it lands it landed even I got I think I got some pretty good shots of that in regular speed some slow-mo but you can also see the suspension how that works and also the build quality is fantastic you're not going to split this board in half I've jumped up and down on it I've jumped it I've done everything to it in the hopes of damaging it in some sort of way just to see if I could and uh, I really couldn't everything held up great so do I recommend this yes if if you really want to make an investment into something that's an electric vehicle for transportation like this that's open air small little vehicle you can fold up yes I would recommend this this is the this is by far my favorite ever going into the golf model they have a golf model that's available that has a few speeds a couple speeds i think it is um and it has a, a golf bag holder on the front so that you can actually take this out of the golf course which is fantastic you, you don't need a golf trailer golf cart trailer you don't have to buy a golf cart you don't have to buy all the batteries that go into a golf cart you don't have to maintain a golf cart you can just throw this in the back of your Honda Accord if you wanted to, or the back of your van or SUV or whatever. Two of them, you and your wife, you and your good friends, whatever, all have one of these. Go to the golf course. I love that idea uh, of doing that. And um, so, yeah, they also make the attachment for the Rover. So you don't have to specifically buy the golf model. You can have the best of both worlds. Mount the golf bag holder on the front. Be responsible in the golf course use one two three modes or something like that skip four and five if you want to but just be responsible with it don't get out there and mess up the fairway i'm going to test that out this uh spring summer going to get the uh, golf bag holders i've got generation one and two so i'll get two of those for me and a buddy to go out and really test these out but i think it's going to be a hit i think if you want to get a new fleet of golf carts you should really not do that get a couple of these a few of these experiment with it, see how people like it, get some feedback. And I really think if you could split it and have half a fleet of these, half a fleet of golf carts, it'd be a win-win and people would really love these. Because if growing up, if I would have, I played golf a lot 
in high school and stuff and um, I'd go out and walk the courses by myself but man I would love to have just had one of these go out fly through 18 holes and be on my way so yeah I think it's a fantastic idea long story short should you buy this yes I think if you've got the money to spend and you really want something that's gonna last forever the build quality is fantastic the welding is fantastic I really did a try to abuse this as much as possible uh, over the past three weeks just to see if I could damage it if I could gouge it up if I could break one of the steering arms do something to it something small and everything has turned out great and um, so there's going to be some more testing in the future for the range for the degrees of slope and some little nitpicky things that I'm just curious about that's going to take longer than three weeks to get to uh, so those will roll out throughout the summer golf bag review as well but yes, I think this is a fantastic investment for an electric vehicle to get you from A to B. So make sure to visit the link down in the YouTube description to go check out some, some of the things I didn't go into. I uh, hope you enjoy some of the visuals. I tried to do some real-time stuff so you can kind of see that, a little bit slow motion so that you could see some of the uh, suspension and things like that. But the teaser video was kind of all slow motion based. And I didn't want to do that for the review. I kind of wanted to sh leave it uh, 60 frames per second so you could really see what it would feel like to be there to see this thing in action. Um, but yeah, it's just fantastic. They should be extremely proud of themselves for designing and engineering this thing from the ground up. Attention to detail is all over the place. And the industrial commercial feel of it is fantastic. You feel like you got your money's worth. It's great. So make sure to explode on that subscribe button and ding that bell so you get notified of the next cycle board uh, review thing that we do. And uh, yeah, go check out the link to this thing down in the description. Uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you get one. And if you do get one, please leave a comment below about what you think. Uh, and also throw some ideas, some, something that you might want to see tested on this so that I might can work on that through the, through the summer. See ya.